Hello, I'm Tom Leach. With me is Lewis Cox. We're at the meadow where Shrewsbury were just 12 minutes away from getting through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. Are you smiling because I didn't call it the uh, Montgomery yep. Waters Meadow? I know you would be. A good performance for Shrewsbury Town. A 1 0 win probably wouldn't have flattered them uh, against a good, a very good, personnel wise anyway, championship yeah. side Stoke. On paper. On paper. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, it was such a shame that Town couldn't quite see the last 10, 12 minutes out because. Yeah, in my eyes, and I think a lot of fans, they'd have deserved the one 0 win. Um, mm. You know, scored at a great time just before half time and second half. You know, Stoke had more of the the ball as you think they might. And yeah, as you would expect. But they fair. they they did not trouble Shrewsbury at all. Shots, you know, half a dozen shots from outside the box, crosses in the defence, and, and the goalkeeper Steve Arnold were dealing with everything. Um, it was impressive, you know, and I didn't, I didn't. I was never worried that Stoke, you know, you know, they're building up a head of steam or whatever. Obviously, we know the situation. How much Gary Rowett's under pressure. The away crowd were not happy in the I slightest. Think you could see it on the pitch as well. I think I tweeted a couple of times in the game, and there was a few occasions where I think, especially midway through the second half, where everything Stoke was doing seemed to be ballooning into the stand or sailing wide, yeah, and the players did look dejected on the pitch. It was a very you would imagine that that kind of pressure and, yeah, and atmosphere I think in the crowd seeps through. Yeah. yeah, without that, and you know, look, they're they're one nil down against the League One side who are plucky underdogs and, and so on. It probably felt like it didn't weren't going to be their day, but then you know, seventy four minutes I think Rowett uh, rolls his dice for the last time, makes three changes. You know, sends on Peter Crouch, sends on Mama Biram Juf and Tyrese Campbell, mm-hmm. and remarkably four minutes later all three combined for the equaliser, which is fair play Rowett for that because he's poss- probably saved himself there as yeah. he saved his job for another how long. Um, let's see if he'll be in charge for the replay in what is likely to be just over a week. Um, so unlucky they couldn't take it today, Tad. Um, yeah, really, you know, impressed. I think it was a good day and a good performance, and maybe slight regrets. You, you rue those second half chances. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about those chances because yeah. obviously we, Town scored a, a perfect time just before the break. Yeah. Everyone always, that's an old cliche, but that is a brilliant time to score in yeah, football. Yeah, it was, fourth minute of added time, yeah. A sort of 15, maybe 20 minutes into the second half, Aaron Amadi Holloway is presented with a golden opportunity <laughs> right behind us here, a golden opportunity to head home. Similar, Anthony Grant after the game compared it to his chance against Coventry, that one he buried, yeah. this one, it looked like he couldn't quite hang in the air high enough to keep his yeah. head down. What a shame, I, I said to you as soon as that went over that was a game right there mm. and you know you hope you don't uh, regret that. Uh, it was a great breakaway, really. It's a bit of a counter. Um, Alex Gilead and Greg Doherty, who have legs, don't they, for town? They have, you know, Gilead is direct. He, he runs at players and beats them. Doherty's got the energy to do the same, and they did that down the right. It was a great move. Doherty's played in down the right, puts in the most inch perfect. Doherty's delivery was actually a little bit off today. It weren't his best game by any means, but his delivery there was a peach. And you know, Amadi Holloway's found what eight yards out, maybe yeah. he's unmarked. Perhaps he's got to come onto it and sort of. It's an, maybe it's a little bit awkward the header, but I'm being totally kind to him because it was a goal and chance that he should have buried. He'd back him to bury it with his aerial prowess. He scored oh, good, good headers this season, uh, but he put it over and yeah, what a chance it was. Um, it's totally unmarked. What a chance it was. We'll say he came on, obviously, for the unfortunate Lenny, who we'll speak about in a sec, and then went off late on. Obviously, his fitness isn't ready for the 90 or whatever or, or however long it would have been, but. He bullied Ashley Williams in, yeah. in the air, you know, uh, a Premier League defender of how many hundreds of Premier League games and Welsh international, I believe. He he gave him a torrid time, which is credit to Amadi Holloway because he, he can be on his day like today, such a handful. Yeah, he really impressed me today. I, th- I think he's grown into a very good hold-up player, especially at this level. And I think testament to that was the way that he won the penalty at the end yeah, of the yeah, first yeah, half. Yeah, he, yeah. A uh, little poke through, I think it was from Gilead, just into his path. He got his body in the way that was his first priority as a target man does, and drew the foul from. I think it was Williams again, wasn't it? No, it was, uh, it was Edwards. Edwards, right back. Yeah, yeah but we, we said, didn't we, at one point in the second half when Stoke was seeing more of the ball, um, that because of the injury and how it went, Amani Holloway went as a lone striker. I don't think he can play that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd, I'd love to see him rocking a beer, as we did for a, for a while. Obviously, he was suspended today, the top scorer rocking a beer, but the. Amadi Holloway, it, it, not not questioning his work rate or whether he, he's just is he physically capable enough to close people down in that lone role to 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 be intense and, and press. I'm not sure he's capable of that, um, and that holds you back a little bit with, with the one front man. You, you need those players to to harry defenders and yeah. 
But yeah, he, he was great at what he does today. Super. Uh, we'll speak about Lionel John Lewis then. Uh, it looked to me like he got his studs caught in the turf. It was sort of 15 minutes into the first half. Went over on his knee. He's had trouble with his knee before. Yeah. And it doesn't look good, the early signs. <coughs> horrible moment. Really horrible. Um, Sam Ricketts called it the biggest disappointment of today. You know, more so than the fact Stoke got a late equaliser. Mm. Yeah, club captain. Um, you know, he gets his uh, share of stick from, from the fans. You know, but... Yeah, you know, it's it's hard not to be gutted for him, disappointed for him. He's a lovely guy, great guy, but such an important character around the yeah. the training ground. You know, it was fans overlook it, but it was so important last season under Paul Hurst in the the miracle season. Um, important again, still he was made club captain by John Askey. You know, club captain obviously cut, came in at Sunderland for for such an unfamiliar role on the left and carried it out so well. Same here today. Trusted trusted with that again. Even in, he got injured in the thirteenth minute. By that point, I'd already typed out that he'd won flick-ons that yeah. were dangerous for Lorraine Gilliard. On the flip side, he was back in his left-back position, yeah, yeah, yeah. preventing corners. You know, obviously, at his age, he's not the youngest. Lionel John Lewis isn't the fittest player, but for as long as he could, he'd give Tan that down the left all game. Um, and yeah, it, from the split second it happened, you, you, I mean, it was really far away from us on the other side of the the pitch but you you just worried um, as soon as he went down with no one near him no contact you could tell he tried to twist yes. and obviously he, as soon as he went down he had his he had his um, hand in the air waving for and I think Granty went over and you could tell they were calling for for obviously assistance that went on and, and he was stretched off after a couple of minutes and it was pretty horrible wasn't it to see he, he looked you know he was sitting up but you could tell it, there was no getting up he, he was distraught and looked emotionally as he was coming off I've seen him in the dugout after the game with a brace on that um, le- it was his left knee I think yeah left knee with a brace on with, with crutches um, obviously Sam Ricketts was asked about him and I mean that, that story is going online uh, shortly uh, Anthony Grant spelt, spoke sorry Anthony Grant spoke emotionally and passionately about him uh, as you see on our site said some of the players had tears in their eyes as he was coming off so that can be hard to overcome to be fair yeah. Town, Town went on from that and, and took the lead for a penalty given in added time that was given because of the Lenny injury, um, ironically. But they, they put that behind him, and it's sort of one of these where you you um, go for the player that's got injured, don't you? You, you, you give it for for Lenny, sort of stricken in in the uh, in the dressing room, and they, they did that. To be fair, they there's some superb performances and battles battlers out there. You've done your player ratings mm-hmm. in the press box with with some of the reporters. Actually, everyone's come up with different. Yeah, players different of the match, played, played well for town. Yeah. Some have said, no, I know you said Josh Laurent, which I think is fair. Some have said Anthony Grant. Some, someone said Ollie Norburn. Um, a lot of fans on Twitter have said Ryan Haynes, mm-hmm. who um, did well. A left back. I think he deserves to be mentioned, to be honest, because because he's had an awful lot of criticism, Ryan Haynes, especially about <laughs> defending. That's been sort of throughout his career. But I thought today he looked particularly solid. Yeah, going back yeah, against yeah, yeah. probably the hardest opposition that he's faced this season and may face all season. Did, did so against Sun, at Sunderland as well recently up against someone like I think it was McGeady, Aidan McGeady. Um, you know, positionally he's suspect at times, and there was maybe one, possibly two diags that yeah. had him, you know, running over his shoulder. But in the tackle, he's okay, mm-hmm. and you know, fair play to him. He was part of an absolutely resolute town back line. I thought James Bolton had a great first half. Uh, yeah. Boyd Stokey, he was. Winning everything, and uh, yeah, even the second half, he was winning everything. We said at some point in the second half, didn't we, that Matt Sadler and Luke Waterfall probably needed a mention yeah, yeah, just yeah. because of big, how much of arms left, arms length, sorry, that Stoke have been kept at. Mm. You know, force them to shoot from from outside the box so many times in the second half. I mean, Benikafobi, we'll see a twelve million pound striker that went through yesterday. Sido Berahino from West Brom did nothing in the town box mm-hmm. did they realistically Steve Arnold's had one save to make all day that was first off from Tom Ince you know nothing until that, that Crouch equaliser but when he made the triple sub I did think there's a chance Crouch is going to have yeah, the final yeah. say yeah. Crouch you, you know I see a lot of Stoke fans complaining because you know all this money spent or what not they're relying on a 37 year old in the twilight of his career but they've done that again today had to rely on him but we go go for the replay that yeah. town, the, the least town deserve and that'll be a great day out. It's just a shame because it would have been a great scalp today. Um, fourth round of the FA Cup is not something the club have done very often. But 
they'll be aiming to do it again. Exactly. Um, you mentioned that. We'll, we'll t make the trip to the Bet365, and having seen the performance today, I don't see a reason why Shrewsbury can't nah. go and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them again and get through to the fourth round. Yeah, we don't know if Gary Wright will be in charge. Then exactly, do we? Yeah. It's, it's likely to be Tuesday the 15th, unless Telly changes it, um, which is a, a week on Tuesday. Stoke only play once between now and then. That's a championship game at Brentford, I believe. So, I mean, if, if they don't get the result, that you know, if they lose their fourth, I don't know, fourth league uh, defeat on the spin, or maybe mm -hmm. third, but, you know, that, that could spell trouble for him. I don't think he's, Gary Rowett, seen off his uh, no. problems here with that late equaliser. He's maybe, you know, kept the axe from falling tonight, but, you know, a game of similar magnitude for him next time at, at Brentford. And let's see, you know, if, if he goes after that Brentford defeat, then it's a caretaker jobby or or what not come the Tuesday night, but it'll be a great occasion, there'll be yeah. hundreds of town fans there, you know, in the high hundreds, uh, maybe even more, and it'll be a, a great occasion for the players, I know Anthony Grant spoke pretty funnily about it there, but a lot of these town players haven't played in big arenas mm -hmm. like that, and yeah, the players have proven today that playing against, all of them have played in the Prem, if most of them, um, for, for a couple international footballers there, you know, multitude of caps, and town have gone toe to toe with them and, and been better than than them for, for me. Um, showed more intent and yeah, it, it, encouraging actually. And, and Sam Ricketts, you can read his reaction now. He's a little bit rueful of of not going through to the fourth round, but was was pleased with the standard that town are setting in this game, the, mm -hmm. the Sunderland game not so long ago, the Coventry game here when they win. They're more often than not they're showing this standard that he um, he calls for the the work rate and uh, what he wants to see from his players. So he was really impressed with, with a lot of today. So, yeah, massively positive day, and um, it's going dark even though it's only like <laughs> half three, which is a bit weird and all over the place. For all the reaction from today's game, keep it at shropshirestar.com.